The Van de Velde use a lot of graphite in their drawing, which is very unusual for 17th century artists. Graphite was mostly used by uh, maybe draftsmen or architects at the time. But the graphite they used doesn't look like the pencil we know today. They used raw material and it looks like a mineral that had to be cut down and resized to be used in a pen holder so that it would be easier for the artist to hold the graphite and draw on the piece of paper. You could directly use the graphite to draw, but it's not very practical. So you can see here that the graphite has been cut to have a shape that you could fit in your lead holder. In the UK, graphite is mined mostly in uh, Cumberland, in the Lake District. So we can imagine that maybe the Van der Velde were using graphite from England for some of their drawings. So here we have a lead holder. It's a little tube of metal with a split at the end and a little ring here. When you pull the ring down, you can open more the splitted end of the lead holder, which allow you to remove and put back your piece of graphite. And to adjust the pressure around the graphite and make sure it stays in your lead holder, you use this ring and push it as close as you can from the edge. And then your piece of graphite is taken at the end and you ready to do your drawing. This one is made of metal, but artists during the 17th century could also have used like wood or reed. And in a similar manner, have a split and place a piece of graphite and secure it, instead of having a ring, secure it with a piece of string. So graphite is quite a versatile material. Depending on the angle you're holding it, you can have very thin line like we here with the edge of the graphite. Or we can go have a bit thicker lines like so, depending on the angle and also the pressure you're applying on your tool. Or you can even go with a wider lines that you could potentially use to do some shadows on your drink. Another property of the graphite I think was very useful for the Van der Velde was the fact it was waterproof. And Van der Velde, the elder, used to draw at sea. So I think it was something that was very easy to have a piece of graphite with you and draw at sea. And then if K is drawing got to it, you wouldn't lose your design. On this drawing, you can identify all the techniques as the Van der Velde used in their drawings. You have the graphite for the under drawing here. And then you can see stronger lines like this, made with iron gall ink. And then all the gray area for the shadow were made with a carbon ink wash. And if you look even more closely, you can see that some of the details initially made with graphite have been corrected with iron galling. On the left ship, the artist modifies the position of the flag, initially drawn with graphite and then corrected with iron galling on top. So the under the ring with graphite is maybe a first thought put on the paper and then coming on top of it, affirming some decision with uh, iron galling. Iron galling has been used for a very long time and it's a quite easy ink to make. So we could imagine that they would maybe make their own ink. So we have here some of the main ingredients used to make iron galling. Some oak galls that were indispensable to make the ink because of the tannic acid. We have here some gum arabic and used as a binder to make the ink. One of the other ingredients was iron sulfate and water. And all these ingredients were mixed together to make iron galling. So we have here some ogles that I collected in Greenwich Park. This round shell are basically a reaction from the tree to a wasp leaving the eggs under the leaf of the oak tree. And once the wasp reached maturity, they kind of escape from this little round shell. And this is what we use. We crush these little oak galls then to extract the tannic acid and be used to make the ink. It's such a privilege to have a glimpse into the life of a 17th century artist studio in England.